So I'm disassembling a BSA Dandy engine. No, I'm not sure what CCs it is. Um, uh, on the little book, uh, it says BSA Dandy 70, so I'm not sure if it's 70cc, but uh, it'll probably, it might be marked somewhere on the engine. Again, uh, I don't know what year it is. Uh, I just got an absolute wreck of a BSA Dandy, and I managed to salvage a couple of bits off of it. Um, so now I took off the engine and uh, I'm going to take it apart and uh, clean all the parts and put it all back together again if I can get gaskets well I can make gaskets I suppose if I have to so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off what looks like a kickstart so I'll open that bolt there I had a severe job with the plug it was really seized in but I soaked it in petrol for two days and um, it's come loose so I can get it off now so right I'm just going to undo that bolt there and take off that kick starter right I've just taken off the kick pedal thing there and uh, the spline on that looks good and uh, this is an 11 mil nut so you'll need an 11 mil spanner the next thing I'm going to do now is to take off um, I'll take off the uh, head off of it, I think, uh, to get the piston off so that I won't damage it. So, I did manage to get the plug unscrewed on it, and you can see the trouble that I had with it. It was absolutely rotten. Anyway, it's off. And uh, I'll have to get a replacement bolt. Two bolts, uh, two of them were in very bad condition, the other two were okay, so I'm going to undo this one here now and the top section of the head will come off right I've just undone that bolt there and uh, I'll have to try and get this one out with a voice grip or something so it looks in reasonably good condition just needs a good cleaning and the bore in here looks pretty good as well there's no scoring or anything like that so um, I had trouble with this as well, so I can actually unscrew it now. Uh, I presume this is the um, the exhaust section going through that, but I haven't been able to get it out. That looks like it inside. Um, maybe I'll try and get it out and try and not damage the treads on the on that thing. So to get this off now, I think I have to take off this bolt here. So I'll undo that next. I've already taken off the um, sprocket as well when I was uh, because I had to take it off to get it off of the frame of the bike. Right, I have that bolt up there now. I'm just wondering, will that come off? Yep, yeah, it's coming up. Right, the bore is perfect on it anyway. I don't have a, I don't have an engine frame for this one. I have one for the quickly, the NSU quicklies, but I don't have one for this, so I'm just going to have to um, mess around with it. Uh, the piston looks in good condition anyway, so I'll take off. I'll try and get that out next, so that I won't do any damage to it. Hopefully I'll get the whole engine apart without stuff breaking because a lot of the screws look pretty rusty. Try and take off this piece here. Um, it appears as if it possibly is a clutch. There's a cable going through it and you can pull it. Um, so whatever is in there is working so it's more than likely the clutch is in there. But um, I'll try and take this off. It's pretty rusty. Hopefully it'll go well. Now I had a bit of luck and uh, that unit is after coming out there. 
so I can take it off. Hopefully it'll clean up. Right, we'll put it in there. Right. I can't seem to get the piston up to get at the um, to get at the uh, little uh, circlips that are holding it in place. Um, I'll just see if I can turn something to get it to come up so that I can get it out. Now, nearly an hour later, I finally got this cover off. As you can see, I had to drill. I had to drill the two bolts. There was no way they were coming off. I tried uh, shock screwdrivers and everything. So now I'm looking at a carburetor. So I have to try and get those two out if I can, but it doesn't look like. I'll heat them and see if I can get them out anyway. Uh, maybe I will. But at least I've salvaged this. The worst thing that could happen now is that I break some one of the casings because the casings might be very easy to, uh, to get. So that one is off anyway. Right, let's try and take this carburetor out next. Um, see how it's attached. Now I've just undone the top of the carburetor where the spring is and I've taken that off. Um, I don't know how this carburetor is, uh, is uh, sitting in there, how it's attached. It has to be screwed in there I would imagine. But it doesn't look as if I can turn it. Maybe if I take off the bottom section I can actually turn it in there, but I don't think so. Because that's going to get caught on that. So... Hmm. Maybe I have to wait. No, this is part of that casing. So it still won't come out. Anyway, I'll go and fiddle with it and see what happens. Right, I haven't figured out how to get that car carburetor out yet um, it's turning slightly now but it won't turn all the ways around um, so I just can't get it out um, I'll just see if I take this screw off maybe I'll be able to get it out but when I turn it over that way this hits off of this here and it looks to be um, part of this casing not part of that casing let me just see here if I can see if there's any separation I'm out of buying a spare parts list, but it hasn't come yet, so I'm a small bit of a loss as to exactly what I'm doing. But anyway, look, let's carry on. I'm going to try and undo this casing here now. There's a bolt there and another one at the other side. And I'll see if I can take that off. Now I managed to get both of the screws out, so thanks be to God I have them out. Uh, what I'm doing now is um, I'm after undoing the bolts holding this section here There's a line there But it appears to me as if This section is held inside as well because there's a bump here a bump there So there's some sort of hold on it from inside there So I'm taking off this center casing here now And I'm going to split this half from that half now I'm having difficulty, uh, one of the nuts is after snapping off there, uh, that there are two balls there, long balls, one came out no bother and the head of this one is after snapping off and it's seized here as well. So it's going to be very difficult to get it off now. I've started here with these screws here, I think this is the clutch side but I'm not sure. So I've loosened all those there now with the shock uh, screwdriver so there's five screws all together so I'm going to take them out now right I'm after taking off that small little um, cover there which sat there those two small little screws I've taken off the five bolts off of the thing but it still won't come apart um, so what I've just found there now is that um, That cable that comes through there is attached to that. So I can pull that out now.
and see what else is in here. Right, the spring comes out. This other thing isn't coming out though. I don't want to break it. It's obviously attached to something inside. Right, there's a screw on that there now as well. I'll open it anyway just to see what happens. Um, I'll try and investigate it a bit more first though. Now that section is after coming out there and um, I'm just trying to get it out slowly. It's uh, There's a lot of oil coming out. Uh, there's gears coming out there now that I don't want to fall off because I want to see exactly how they're fixed inside. Okay, I think I've salvaged it. Right. Okay. This is the gearbox anyway. Right. Okay, I'm just going to um, take that up there now and make sure everything is in the right place. No, I'm after undoing the two nuts there on that, taking them off so this thing comes up and there's gear kind of teeth down there which keep this in place and uh, that's all going to come out there now. Uh, there's a spring on it and I don't know where the spring was attached but it's not attached at the moment. Um, there may be a piece broken off of it, I'm not sure. So I'm actually going to take this out now. Uh, this out first. Then this here. That's the gear changing mechanism. From what I can see. Now I'm left with two gears inside there and how to get them out now is the next thing. So I'll have to check that. Now I was just looking at that there and I was just trying to see what was happening here and there's a kind of a pin and there looks to be a rubber seal on the center part of it. Not on all of it, just on where well, it's obviously an oil seal. So that's after coming out, so I can put that down there. Oops, it is it. Right, um, the next thing now is going to take quite a while, I would say, and that is to get these bolts out. So um, it's probably going to take me several hours to get these things apart. To get the carburetor out I thought it was screwed in but in actual fact it's just pushed in. Now I'm not sure if that uh, kind of brown uh, section on it should come out as well um, if it's actually a part of the carburetor but I assume that it is so that's that. And there's a number in here, BSK1256428. Right, I found the engine number earlier on, DSE21486. And the frame number I found was DS21550. Right, I finally got it apart. I had to uh, cut the screw there, so I'll try and drill that screw out and I'll try and drill that one out. Um, I had to cut that one there as well to get it apart. Anything didn't work, so that's it. That's one side, and that's the other side.
clutch is spinning anywhere. Oh, this is spinning too. Okay, so I can now get back up onto the bench and start taking them apart. Now I've taken the carburetor apart there. This is the float that goes up and down. Spring. Cap goes on there. That's the screw underneath. This is the, um, oh I forget what the name of it is. Uh, it's a nozzle, but I'll have to replace the nozzle because it's, um, it's broken there. And on the other side then you have the little float which is in good condition. And this little cap goes on there. Now I think this little thing that was cocking out of the engine earlier was attached there, so it's got something to do with um, drafting to the to the carburetor, coal starting or whatever. And there are the two screws off of it there, so that's that. Um, I'm glad now I've got the whole carburetor except for the nozzle. Um, so we'll try and get a replacement nozzle for it. So I'm just looking at these clutch things here now and um, I'm pressing them down it looks as if there's a, a pin that I have to take out that thing there, a little pin so I'll try and get that out now next so this is the clutch section there now and when I press down the springs I can see that I need to take out this little pin when you press it down, it's hard to do it. But you can see that the pin needs to come out. So let's do that next. Right, so I've got one of them out and it's a little kind of a like a saucer. And you have to press it down very hard to get this little pin out. Which goes through there. There's a hole there somewhere. So, I have another five to do. It's not easy to get them out. Um, there has to be some something that I could use to make it a bit easier, but look, I'll keep trying. Now I finally got this out. I heated it up, uh, which helped, and uh, I prized it out then with these things here, but by God it was hard to get it out. So... Seems to be a second one of those there, but it started getting a bit stuck onto it because I had to heat it. Right, um... In here now I have to knock down the edges of this washer. It's a, it's a lock and washer so to get at that there. Now how I'm going to get it out I don't know because it just keeps spinning. I'm just making a start on the other side of the casing. Um, I've held the position, uh, the piston in position there with this uh, pin and uh, to stop this from rotating and uh, 21 mil 21 mil uh yara socket to take off the nut and uh, i have to have a look at that there then and see what's in there i'm just making a start on the other side of the casing um i've held the position uh, the piston in position there with this uh, pin and uh, to stop this from rotating and uh, 21 mil, 21 mil, uh, yara socket to take off the nut. And uh, I have to have a look at that there then and see what's in there. Right, this piece is some sort of a spring. So. I'm just wondering how this comes off now next. It has to come off of it, I'd imagine. Probably with a pullers or something. Now I'm just after driving the pin through there. I took off the two little circlips. And that's the piston off. 
pistons in good condition. Right. Now I wasn't able to get that nut off so I took the angle grinder to it and I cut it out of it altogether so I should be able to get a nut somehow. Uh, small slight bit of damage to the treads but very little. Okay and after all that it won't come out. I'll have to get both hands to it. Now I managed to loosen it and get it out. So that's it. Put it in the box with the other bits. Now the next piece to take out is this uh, circ clip here. Which has just gone flying. But I'll find it. Um, there looks to be uh, an oil seal inside there now as well. And there's probably a bearing behind that. Right, so from the other side I used one of my uh, socket, long sockets and with the circular part at the other end of the shaft there I tapped it with the hammer uh, so the seal is after coming out and uh, the unit is after coming out with the bearing attached to it. So now all I can see is that big wheel and right down at the bottom then there's um, it's like what you'd get on a conrod, it's a needle, kind of a needle bearing piece. So, um, right, this is what it looks like from the other side. Now, this wheel here, um, I can't seem to get it out because it's, um, it's sitting in there into that. Uh, and this wheel goes through here but I'm not sure if I actually drive this out from the back because it's attached to a bearing and a seal as well um, if that's the right thing to do um, I don't want to damage that area there but on the other side where that wheel is It looks as if there's um, uh, a slotted bolt. I'll have to go and have a look at the um, spare parts list to see if I can figure it out. Now I've just tapped through that pinion there to get it out and get a bit of space. I'm all over the shop today. And That's it. And then this uh, wheel comes out. And uh, we have a bearing in there and an oil seal at the other side. Like so. Now, this wheel here now I assume that this comes out somehow but if you look at it there there's a kind of a slotted uh, I'll try and undo it I don't think there's a, a bolt of some description in there but um, I'll have a look anyway and see what happens with it right I've made a decision that uh, it doesn't really affect anything so I'm not going to take it out I think this this has to come out for this to come out there's no way you see the way it's spinning around on it there but I don't really want to take it out and cause a problem it won't make any difference to my cleaning the thing up anyway and uh, that race inside there is perfect as well so I don't need to buy one Right, it's been about a week since I did anything with this um, BSA Dendy engine because I couldn't get this rotor off so there's a special tool for it um, now if you're into metalwork and stuff like that you can make it up but <coughs> I bought a bearing pullers set on Amazon and uh, this came with it 
So what I've done is in the two holes on the clutch I put a bolt in there and a bolt in there. I turned the two things the opposite way around and uh, I put um, it's just a, a drill bit in there to stop it from spinning and I put a, a piece of my socket wrench set in there and uh, tighten it down on the thing and I got it up so that's what it looks like that's the rotor the magneto inside and uh, I'm not sure if that's a Woodruff key or as if it's just um, a spline running down along that there I'll have to have a look at the parts book but I think it's part of the um, part of the thing itself so I was worried about getting off uh, the carburetor the carburetor side and getting the conrod and crankshaft out but as it turns out uh, there's actually bolts on the end of all those studs so <coughs> Hopefully once I take the bolts off I'll be able to get um, the goddamn thing apart finally. Right, I've removed the one, two, three, four, five. Only four there, but the other one is inside in the casing there down there. So when I'll take it apart it'll fall out. This looks a bit grotty, but um, I'll have to check it and see if the coils are okay. I more than likely have to uh, change the condenser which is an unusual looking thing mightn't be possible to get one okay uh, I must try and get the casing apart I know um, actually I think I'll try and take the um, dynamo off first there's two screws here holding it now that's the um, dynamo off and uh, underneath I've found that there are two more bolts and I hope it's attached to that mechanism there. I think that might come off. Hopefully it does. I'll have to go and get the spare parts list again and see what the situation is with them. So I'll take these two off and see what happens. Now the two bolts are off and that's after coming off. Right, uh, I'm still no nearer to getting that off now though, so I'll have to go and get the parts list, I'll probably have to get a pullers now on that again to try and pull it off. This is the worst spare parts list I've ever seen in my life. This piece isn't mentioned on it at all, which is at the other side there there's the, the rotor and it doesn't show what pieces are inside there that I can see anyway there's nothing showing what that part is now that's obviously got to be pulled up because there's a, a gap in it like there is for this thing here I must see if that's actually a woodruff key but I think it's all the one piece now I managed to get uh, the two casings apart. It's in remarkably good condition inside it really. Okay, so it doesn't look like I can do anything with the conrod at that side there. There's nothing to, um, there's no circlip or anything for me to take out. So it's got to be done from the other side. So I've just managed to get it to move ever so slightly there with a screwdriver. So hopefully I can get the pullers into it now um, and that these will go in underneath it and pull it up. Right, uh, the pullers went in underneath it so it's coming up there now. Right, that's it off. And unfortunately, that doesn't make things any easier. 
I'll have to try and get that Woodruff key off if it is a Woodruff key. Right, I gave it a tap of the mallet, the rubber mallet, and it's after actually puncturing through. And uh, this, we'll call it a Woodruff key. It's not technically a Woodruff key. It's just a spline that goes down there to hold things in place. So it comes out now once you once you give it a tap of the hammer. Right, so I finally got it out there by tapping it with the mallet and uh, it all looks in very good condition and there's no play on the conrod which is good. Now I'm left with a whole pile of other bits and pieces. There's a bearing here and I think from list that there are other bearings that's that big bearing I think yeah it is that's the big bearing there and there's some sort of a circlip underneath that another bearing under that and then there appears to be, uh, it looks like a fibery wash on number 68. 68, it's a crankshaft oil seal. 69 is a crankshaft oil seal ring. So there's an oil seal and there's a, a, some sort of a ring. 64. Crankshaft bearing large. Again, they don't give the size of it. But anyone that does bearings anyway could measure them once you could take them out. Right. Now, I'm waiting on uh, a puller set. I had to order a puller set. Uh, there's a special puller set for getting these type of bearings out. What I have there won't do at all. Right, um, I just put the screwdriver on that there to see what it was and it just it's just a, a washer. That's all that is. It's a heavy washer and it's protecting the oil seal. So that's the oil seal there but it looks to be a small bit on the damaged side. There's some of the stuff coming off of it. Or maybe it's just some... Um, some old grease that's kind of hardened up. Yeah, it's probably grease. Okay, I'll try and get that oil seal out. I don't know if I should wait for those bearing pullers or whether I should just try and get them out. Anyway, look, I'll see what happens next. Right, I just went back to the other casing there. The one that has that wheel in it. And uh, I've just put it down there on the bench like that and uh, I actually just tapped tapped that with the with the mallet and that's oh that spline actually fell out there now oh. so that's that wheel out so that I can clean it right that goes in a different box there's a bar there that actually holds it in place. There's a, there's a, a, a roller bearing inside there, but it looks in great condition. I'm not going to take it out at all. So I have that one cleaned off. Right, um, I just have to take out this oil seal. I don't want to do it, but I'd better do it as I mess it and, and put a new one in there. Right, I managed to get that bearing out there now because this piece in the middle is uh, it just swivels around so I was able to push it aside uh, from the other side and I was able to get one corner of the of the bearing and I was able to drive it out so that's out and that piece is after coming out which is all grease and the reason it's all grease is that 
there's a grease nipple here which you can see it goes down there into it and there's also um, I don't know if it's for oil that's the grease nipple and that's it's possibly for putting some oil down there or lubrication of some description right so I must see now if I can get out the other ones and see what's inside there after I clean it out right that's what it looks like it's a kind of a cone the wide section sits on the big bearing and the narrow section sits on the small bearing and that allows grease and stuff to go around the side of it now there's a circ clip inside there that I must take off to get out the other bearing now that's the uh, circ clip after coming out and I can see the bearing so I should be able to tap the bearing forward from that side there now that's the other bearing it came all the way through there I was able to tap it through from the back like so and out it came so now I, I have that casing finally apart I can clean it and drill out all these studs they're all stuck inside and I just can't get them out I will try heating it again to see if I can shift them um, I don't think there's any treading on this one so if I heat it I might be able to beat it out of it now I finally got to the end of taking uh, this BSA Dendy engine apart so I've cleaned up all those for reassembly now I did lose the little um, grease nipple yesterday it fell on the ground but I might find it but I think I have them anyway so they're all cleaned up I must just give a bit of a clean to some of those now what I will need to get is uh, one of these things I've never seen clutch um, gaskets like these before I don't know what they're made of but this one is attached to the metal part now I don't know if it's supposed to be on that but uh, there's a tear on it there so I'll have to see about making something or trying to get one uh, some of the engine bits there the dynamo there crankshaft some more gears inside there the two heads pistons are in there the carburetor and the other engine parts I have one of those cleaned up I must clean the other one up and paint it so that's it um, it was a bit of a dose trying to get it apart but onwards and upwards so we'll try and put the whole thing back together now again and hopefully it might be of some use to somebody down the road